very dear students and my audience very warm welcome to dr zia ahmed youtube channel in today's lecture we shall be talking about part 10 and 11 of the poem the reflections by tawfiq rafat i have already recorded uh, the remaining parts which uh, which range from 1 to 9 and these are available on my channel so the students and the people who want to learn about they can access that channel but right now we are on part 10 of uh, the poem reflection by tawfiq rafat the poem begins with these two lines this orchard that you inherit is ample theme for a ramayan the poet is letting us know that if somebody wants to write poetry there are many many ways to find out what theme the poetry should be on what topic should be discussed what stories should be made and for this purpose he gives us the example that just look at an orchard that orchard possibly may be having flowers birds grass insects etc etc and so he says that it can provide lots of themes in order to write poetry that a biggest poem like ramayan can be written because of this just one orchard and that is why it is very significant to look around and find what themes can be there on which the poet can write poetry and in this way he continues by saying some astronauts will him the moon as it really is but it is his concern the poet says that there are other people other field other professions are also available in this world for example he says that look at the people who go to space astronauts for example they will look at the moon and they would say that the moon is like this or that their vision is different but the poet's vision is opposite to that because the poet imagines and the astronaut possibly would look at the reality of existence and that is why he may be having a different view the poet says that it is it is his job to do so and it is his concern so that is why leave the words of astronaut and think about the poet what he wants to say about the beauty of things and so he says that within a frond's confines are songs more numerous and varied than the banners on a saint's tomb he says that if you want to write songs if you want to write poetry at that time the curves and and the and the sharp edges of just one leaf are sufficient in order to write so many songs and if you compare this thing with the banners which are the kind of appreciative banners which are situated on the tombs of certain saints may be the source of some inspiration but then only just one leaf of the nature of some tree of some plant may provide sufficient material in order to write poetry according to the poet the things which are in reality present may be described by the people in certain real ways and the prose may be written but the poet definitely has a different job to do he searches for truth he looks for truth he tries to find this truth in the productions of nature and that is why he can write poetry on any of the things the things may be simple may be hidden may be present here and there the poet looks for them and finds out about their beauty he does not need to rely on the observations of the astronaut and the writings on the saint's tombs he simply needs to think about nature and write about nature that will give sufficient theme words everything like that to write poetry and he therefore continues by saying all the lives you have lived are pressed up close like the wind the punishing wind that ends this summer the poet here compares the life of the human beings and the experiences of human beings with the wind the wind that starts gathers becomes powerful and then scatters and such winds which are powerful winds they are the cause of change for example when summer season is there at that time the winter is to come the winter won't come unless the wind blows very harsh and very sharp and ultimately the winter season would come and summer would end now this is the cycle of life the summers come the winters go winters come and the summers go and air is responsible for that the poet compares the experiences of human being with this air with this wind as the wind changes the season the weather and the life around in the same way the writings of the poet the lives of the people 
are the source of all that and this thing can happen with poetry as well. The poet is telling us now something more. He says, you wonder what caravans rested beneath the Neem's medical shade, what cavemen hunted here and brontosaurs plunged. The poet gives further examples to suggest that it is important to look at the human life and it's important to look at nature. For example, he says that you can write lots of poetry by just imagining about a tree, the neem tree, which is having some medicinal qualities and think how many caravans, how many people came, rested under that neem tree and got benefit out of that. You can write the stories of these people. Similarly, you can also imagine that there may be some very good places for the cavemen where they hunted and the big animals which, which were present like dinosaurs, they also were present. You can write the stories about them as well. And the poem therefore or the poetry therefore is not limited to just one space or one thing. It can have number of spaces from where you can take the material in order to write on the poetry. The bird says, perhaps tomorrow on this place will bloom a mushroom of such monstrous growth that life will cling to a microcosm and our shared book and tower will be like a tangle of dried grass blown across the sands. The poet says that the cycle will continue as he describes about the ancient people first of all. And then he comes to say that in future it's a possibility that the places which we discuss, these places may give growth to some mushrooms in such a great quantity, big quantity, that if you look at these mushrooms, you will be able to understand the life which was in the past, which is in the present, possibly it may be in the future, and the mushrooms become the microcosm of life, the scene becomes the microcosm of life. In the same way, the orchard, the book and the tower, these things will be present. In the same way, these things will combine together, and these things can be seen in the dried tangles of the grass, which the wind will blow. So it means that time and tide are coming and are, are going. In this way, the weathers are changing. In this way, the history of the human being is changing with the passage of time. The poet says the things change, but the imagination of the poet can reinvent, reintroduce and reinterpret all these things. In this way, plenty of material is there on which the poetry poet can write. So the whole section of this poem talks about the sources from where the imagination and inspiration can grow to write down poetry as the poem reflection is on the observation and thinking of the poet about writing poetry. So this section also explains to find different sources of inspiration and of reinterpretation the poet can make of these resources. With the same tones, the poet continues and the poem would definitely end at section 11. The poet says here, every time we assemble words in a new order, we give them life beyond anything that they once meant and beyond ourselves as we had been, though both are steeped in usage. The closing section of the poem introduces again with the importance of words and the poet. He says, words and poet are interlinked directly together. For example, it is the poet who chooses the word and uses them in poetry and as a result gives them new life. So before coming into the lines of the poetry, the words may be having a different meaning. The poet may be having a different meaning. But when the poet rearranges these words and puts them in a special order, as a result, the words give new meaning. Possibly, these meaning may not be existing in the mind of the poet, or these words may not be used by, the, by, the, by any other poet in a different way, in a same way rather. And so, these two things, the poet and the words, uh, they, they are interlinked with together. The poet gives them life and they help the poet to create the life of poetry, imagination of poetry. And then, the, this then the renewal of man through the revalidation of words is the poet's task. So poet's task, according to Taufik Rafat, has become very much important that when he uses the words and tries to think about something of the past, some life of the past, according to him, these become the renewal of man. And renewals are done through words and words give validation and the poet is doing this job. So that is why the poet is responsible for making the future generations understand what happened in the past and how did the words play. Words played an important role and now once again the poet is doing the same. The poet and the word are rooted in time and then he 
points out to something very important. He says that there is one thing which is very important in the use of this word, in the creation of this poetry, and this is time. According to him, time, the moment on which the things are captured, thought about, and written about, is very much important. Words give specific meaning according to that specific time, and the poet is able to create poetry in the specific time. With the change of time, the possibility of the new meaning may come. But whatever the case may be, the life is revalidated by the words of the poet. And with the same tone, the poet says, he must not only contend with his literary ancestors, but his sons as well who are lisping the slogans of a new criterion. So poet here is speaking a very general idea which many of the poets like Sidney, like uh, Wordsworth, all these people have been pointing out that poetry is not only about the past time, but also it's about the future and the present time. The poet gives us the description in a very beautiful way by saying that the job of the poet is not simply to restrict himself to himself. He should think about his ancestors, literary ancestors, and also he should take care of the future which, the, which is coming up in the shape of the young people who have a different ideology to talk about poetry. And in that way, the poetry must be created not only in the past but also for the future though with some changes as the future developments of life demand so that is why Taufik Rafat is not only supporting the ideologies given by the past poets but also the current or contemporary ideologies of writing of poetry he says this is the paradox a word is indestructible but we are faced with the hell of plurals for words are male and female the poet says that uh, this is very important to know here that some words and the words used by the poets, they are indestructible. But according to him, this saying is a paradox. I mean, it can have double meaning that the words can be destructible as well. But how? According to the poet, the words are male and female. Definitely in the human life also, the analogy can be interpreted that one male and one female are born, they grow up, they play their part, and after that they die, and the new male and female are born. In the same way, the words are used in an arrangement in order to create poetry. Their separate importance finishes, and their importance becomes that thing which is produced. And then that, that thing exists in the shape of words. With the passage of time, that thing also loses its meaning when a poet gives them new arrangement and the new meaning. In this way, the task continues. So the words exist in a way, but they also disappear in another way. That is why this interplay of the words, rearrangement of the words, reproduction of the words, and giving them new meaning is the job of the poet and the words help him. So in this way, as the poet has suggested in the beginning of this part, that words are very much necessary for the poet, and the poet is very much necessary for the words. This thing is proved in the end of the poem. So this is all about this poem, part 11. The poet goes to finish all this by saying, this is a miracle. Even one word in the context of a situation throbs. Though it die before the carnage in its wake can be cleared, it's potent enough one yes can rekindle love or a start a bar. So poet is again interpreting the same thing that the importance of words is there and he is trying to let us know that miraculously, the meaning of the words depend on the situation, the context. And in one situation, the word throbs, beats the heart, and giving a particular meaning. Change the situation? Definitely, it will give a new situation. The poet compares it with the death of the one word. He says, the word, one word cannot exist in, 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 in isolation, and it needs to have a context. And that is why it will give a different meaning. And as, as soon as the new context comes, the meaning possibly may change. And so the carnage, the death of the words may happen, but they will keep on living in new shape, in new format. And according to him, this importance of the words is very potent, very powerful. He gives the example of the word yes. He says, sometime when the word yes is there, love rekindles itself. And the same word yes can start a war. It depends upon the context. So if the lover says, beloved says yes, the life will rekindle itself. 
But if an enemy says yes to fighting up the war, the destruction would be there. So in this way, the context would give different meanings. The context would change. Time would change. Space would change. And the words would die in a particular time space. But they will give new meaning at a new place. So birth will take place. As the words would live in the same way, the poetry of the poet would also live. So according to Taufik Rafat, poetry should be written in such a way that it survives. The importance of the words is there. The importance of the poet is there. But it should be written in such a way that they must be free to lose one importance, one meaning, and they may be able to have another meaning, another importance in another situation. So that is all about this uh, lecture today. Hopefully, uh, it has been able to clear some of the problems and confusions in the poem. If yes, the, the people are also requested to hit the like button and the subscribe button and give your comments also. So that's it. See you in, in some other video next time. Till that time, keep happy, keep satisfied, keep peaceful.